the other thing that's interesting is, and I'm quite curious about is the do you say you have a sports psychologist as mm-hmm. well? How often can you in contact with them? And like does that do, do all athletes have a sports psychologist and mm, I don't think all athletes have one, but I believe that they should. Uh I have been working with one for this whole year and I speak to her once a week. My aunt is a qualified psychologist herself. And she says, no, I think you need about three times a week. I'm thinking, oh God, wow, you've got to talk about three times a week. Like, I thought, like, what can you talk about? Like, I've yeah. spoken to you about two days ago. How much more can you do? But um, I think they are the best thing. I wish I had it when I did my knee. But I think because that's when I like sunk into like a really bad place because mm-hmm. like, I'm very much outgoing. It took a while for me to bring back that confidence and that bubbly person. Um, but a psychologist, I feel like because we believe we can do everything by ourselves. And that saying, and it takes a village to raise a, a village to raise a child. I believe it is true, mm-hmm. and I'm same, I still may be an adult, but I'm still somebody else's child. <laughs> yeah. And I believe that I need my village. I need. Um, I call it an energy bus book. I, I read this book, and I believe everything is like I'm on this bus, and I need someone to be my wing mirror, someone to help me fix my tires. I need someone to be my blind spot, and I feel you need that. And sometimes you get annoyed with your tire, and you need to have a word with that tire. Like, How do I have a word with this tire? <laughs> You go and talk to your psychologist and she'll help you talk about it and you um, discuss things that you probably wouldn't talk to anybody else on this bus about um, because not everyone would understand. So my aunt always thinks, um, no, so, so my family are teachers and they might have a problem with one of their teachers and they're like, well, why don't you just tell them off or tell them about themselves or do something to, you know, get them off your back with, oh, you can't do this protocol, this, this, that, and the other. And then same way, someone will tell me, oh, Asha, you maybe should do this, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. I said, well, you're not here. Like, this is a different world. Like, I can't tell you what to do for your profession because you don't know how to do it with my profession. So you have to learn, like, some things may help. Uh, we can discuss it, but I'd rather you talk about it rather than you tell me what to do in my job mm-hmm. yeah. because you don't know what I have to go through 24-7. This is my daily basis. Uh, this is my day-to-day thing. So I need you to understand from my point of view and how how my, my work is. So when it comes to psychologists, I just feel she kind of just she never obviously never tells she never tells me what to do, but you know when you're offloading and you kind of understand and she kind of guides you in a way to make your own decision and figure out your own things. And I think that's what we need because we bottle up so much and we never talk about it. And I think as we get older, our mental health is so important, especially with social media right now and everyone thinking, oh, we should be this, oh, I should have what she's having and this that, and the other. When you're like, no, this is your lane. And this is how like, I might not be blessed in like having the fastest car or a nice big house and other athletes, but I'm blessed in having a great family or, you know, being able to run fast and make a championship. And some people haven't. So you've got to learn how to just obviously bring it back to yourself again and obviously just talk to her. And I'm saying her because she's a female. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, I, I would advise a psychologist to everyone mm-hmm. because even when it comes to like, say our partners or whoever, I wouldn't even offload to everyone close to me. Yeah. But I would offload to her. So my mom gets a bit upset because I talk to my aunt more than I talk to her about things because she's my mum. I'm yeah. like, mum, but your mum. I can't, <laughs> I can't gi- yeah, I can't, yeah, I can't give you that. But I'll give her some drips and jabs, but I'll go to my aunt because not saying my mum isn't qualified. She's a qualified counsellor too. But my aunt just has that that edge and she'll tell me. Same way one of my other cousins, my other cousins, she kind of has what my aunt has and I'll talk to her about things. But it's just, it's a good thing. I think athletes do need it because mm-hmm. it's hard. We go to a championship and so we perform, like I did perform the, way, the best way I wanted to. Yeah, I've got a medal in the relay, but if I'm talking about my individual performance, I didn't do as well as I should have. It's like you work so hard for these 11 seconds and then it's just like, it's gone just like that. Okay, cool, on to the next championships. And I didn't perform how I wanted to. And it's like, okay, how do I pick myself up from that? So same way picking myself up from performing badly, watching everyone else perform well, and then I will go and do a relay now. It's like, how do I deal with that? Mm-hmm. You, ha- you need to talk to someone about it because me bottling it up and then saying oh I'm fine I'm fine when you're truly you're not fine and they're always that saying how are you are you fine it's always a lie mm-hmm. yeah but it's just talking to someone about it offloading and you know as soon as I've offloaded I feel like I'm a brand new person like honestly I've said what I need to say and I'm like oh I feel good now okay yep yeah, I can start the way yeah and that's what you need you need to offload to someone someone that's not going to judge you just to listen and it's always just someone that's wants to, I don't want you to talk just to listen to what I've got to say yeah. So I I would advise therapy for everybody. I think that's so important what you just touched on there, like so, so, mm-hmm. so important. Because personally, I can only imagine how difficult, mm-hmm. difficult it is in your shoes because we talk about a lot of the time when people are using social media to compare themselves to other people and mm-hmm. how often comparisons are for joy. Yeah. Your job is literally to compare times yeah. and performances <laughs> to other people, which can, yeah. must be so mentally draining. And especially for people going through the time of COVID and stuff, and me and Lucy have been very open about 
um, having a therapist over mm-hmm. like the last year and how amazing it's been for us. Just been able to have someone to not be a fa- couple's therapist. <laughs> <laughs> We've had not, separate not, therapists. Not just yet. It hasn't gone that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but having someone to a professional listener to speak yes. to makes such a difference. Yeah. And um, I think because the industry that we work in on social media and stuff is you're constantly looking at the hyper elite mm-hmm. and comparing that, and that that applies to us as well. And mm. That's where we're, why we're very transparent to other people about it because if it helps someone else resonate. Yeah. or relate then I think it can help them and it's just so nice to hear it from mm. someone of, of your level of athlete as well kind of yeah. go through those things mm-hmm. and how important it is for you to have that other person on the other side to just sit there and listen yeah. and obviously it was it was a big thing in this Olympics as well wasn't it with I think it was it Biles the gymnast who oh, yeah, yeah, ended yeah. up pulling yeah. out yeah Simone and, yeah and it obviously mm-hmm. opened up a whole discussion about mental health as well yeah. and how important it is Um, again there's always kind of Two, two different camps whenever big decisions are made like that and I, you see some horrible things online and comments that people are mm-hmm. making she's she's a top level athlete she shouldn't be doing stuff like that she shouldn't be pulling out it's a disgrace and mm-hmm. and like she's a young female who's mm-hmm. at the end of the day above all else like we just said a human being not just an athlete and the yeah. way that people get treated yeah. even after that when she's in a vulnerable position already I just can't even it's hard co- comprehend her so I think people forget because um it's like, okay, if you took an... So bring back into a teacher, if you do make a mistake or you are sick, you can take a day off. We can't. Mm-hmm. Like you said, you've gone to the championships and they're saying, you're not going to take a day off today because you're about to go and compete at the Olympics. But you said you're not mentally there and you can't physically do mm-hmm. it. And it's just like, how can you tell someone that's not well? I say not well, as in, they're just not ready. They're, they're not mentally ready to compete. Like you can't force someone to do that. But So why should you force someone to go to work if they can't do that? Like it's it's unfair and different jobs are just very different because we're in the public eye and she's got how many million followers and stuff like that. They're, she's expected to do it. But how can we be expected to do something if I if I physically can't? My my mental state of mind cannot allow me to do it. Mm. Like, so say I've just finished my race and my coach, I normally go to September, but I haven't had the best year this year. So I'm just like, I really can't go anymore. And my coach said, are you sure? It's like, I am positive. So the 1st of September, I'm done because you're making me, I'm I'm not running as fast as I want to, but you want me to go and race and then wait, like race probably even worse, like get a slower time just because my head is not in the right position. So he understands that and said, okay, Asha, we're going to finish the season there and we're going to, well, I did a 200, so that's obviously not my main event. So it was more, it was fun for me to do that. But if you asked me to go and do 100, I said, my, my head space isn't there. I, I physically cannot get on the track and do it. The relay is fine because I'm passing the button. Yeah. It's banter, it's with the girls, it's more relaxed. But for me to go and do another 100 meters, I couldn't do it. So it's like, why would I force someone to go into a gymnast, be spinning up and down, we can hurt themselves and they're not mentally there. You, you can't do that. It's, yeah. it's, it's out of order. You're forgetting, like you said, we are human first mm-hmm. before we are Olymp- Olympic athletes. Like we're allowed to have our down days, but according to the rest of the world, we're not, like, you've yeah. made it this far, you've taken someone else's spot. So I didn't get this far and then say, oh, now I'm turned crazy. I don't want to, I don't want to um, compete. It's just like, I've got to a point and I've had basically stage fright. And I can't physically go out there and perform. And I think people need to understand that because it is quite tough. I think the thing is, if she would have had a physical injury and pulled mm. out, no one would have said anything. It's true. Yeah. But because it was a, a mental, which yeah. is, is, is yeah. even worse for a lot of people. Like it's, mm. it's, 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 it's unbelievable. And I think that she's came out and did that. Like we said, we are talking about today. Mm-hmm. It's opened up conversations where potentially people wouldn't have spoken about before. And mm-hmm. people would just, like we said, bottled up on their own. Yeah. And I think it would have done a lot a positive off mm-hmm. the back of it for the sport and for athletes to kind of feel like that pressure is lifted from feeling like they can't speak about it or they need it to. Do you know what it scares me so? Because obviously there's a, the suicide rate is going up as well. And I feel like you, and obviously it's when it comes to young men, they don't like to discuss a lot of things. With yeah. us girls, we would talk a lot, but even though we wouldn't go as far, but at least we would, we would discuss a certain, like a few subjects, I should say. But for men, they don't discuss it a lot. So I know my brother, he closed off with, with us at one point and he just didn't really talk to us or we didn't realise how bad he was doing in his work or whatever. He just never spoke to us. And then one day he just came and spoke to us thinking, wow, you were going for all this and you didn't want to tell us. Like, but we're here for you. Like we're a, like a supportive family, but yet he knows that, but he still couldn't get the words out to physically tell us. So it's like when you, well, now I've, I talk about therapy all the time. So when someone's told me, I think she's going to get therapy. I think she's going to get therapy. But it's not like I'm saying it just because um, I feel like you're, you know, you're, you're not saying you're going crazy. We're talking to a strength and then, then all that kind of the bad ne- the negative uh, connotations to it. But it's just, you could just, it just takes off another load. 
Mm-hmm. And it just, it changes your life. Yeah. And I feel like, I, when I told my brother, I said, that, yeah, just go and get therapy. Go and talk to someone. Go and, uh, go and talk to Auntie Faye. That's why I said, go and talk to her aunt and she'll sort you out. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll be fine. But it's just, some people feel like maybe because they can't afford it, they can't do it. But then even so, you can find a friend that you can trust. Mm-hmm. And I think that's always the hardest thing because people still don't know how to offload to their friends. But I would say, just find some, just find that one person. Even in, you know, record yourself just talking. I've got Wilson now. They're my, um, <laughs> my bull. From Castaway, and I talk to Wilson at home if I <laughs> if I need to have a word or something. <laughs> no one's in the house, and no one's talked to him. Like Wilson, I've had a tough day today. You know? <laughs> but no, you just need to. I feel like because he went through that stuff, and I just feel like you know what, I need you to go and talk to someone, or you know, we're here for you. But I am like pro advocate. Like everyone needs therapy, even if it's just like if you're not even going through anything, just talk. Just if mm. you want someone to talk to, just do it because it is so healthy, so healthy. 